So thank you um, very much the Honourable Minister and the Government of Uganda and uh, Macquarie University for hosting us here um, over the next few days um, and to all those who have worked to put this event on. We are living indeed in interesting times. The triumph of Paris was followed by uh, Brexit in the UK and then Trump reneging on his um, commitments to Paris. But to be honest, I think these are distractions. Trump has inspired not contagion, we're not seeing other countries say that they will do less, but, but inspired action. The economics of energy has tipped in our favour, and the role of non-state actors are more important than ever. Many are calling them now non-party actors, because of course it's the municipalities and, non and sub-national governments that are doing as much as the businesses and the NGOs. And we see new leaders emerging. But climate impacts are more evident than ever, and Paris means nothing if it doesn't deliver greater action on the front line. And some, some governments are uncertain about what adaptation um, actions they should prioritise. Many donors are nervous. The adaptation development debate about what is adaptation, what is development, what should be invested in, is emerging again. So what should governments and donors be investing in? We've been, um, the other, challenge is that we as a group have not been operating at the level of scale that could really make the biggest difference. We need to be reaching hundreds of millions, not hundreds of thousands. So this is the challenge of this, the 11th CBA. We need to really define our ambition post-Paris. Uh, we have over 10 years of shared learning now. And we've, uh, we're a relatively mature and effective platform of practitioners. So the question I pose to this conference is can we do more? Can we critically reflect on our experience, what has really worked and what will really work at scale? What will be transformational? And can we also build the confidence of our governments, the businesses, donors and the funds of what really works on the ground, what will make the greatest difference? As um, the LDC chair pointed out, if the finance isn't reaching the local level, it can't get behind the priorities of the poorest people. So this week, I have two challenges for us as a group. First of all, how do we as a community of practice within the CBA conference refresh our approach and our purpose so that we're more relevant and more influential in this debate at this point? On the, on the wall over there we'll be posing questions every day and we'd really like you all to engage in sort of beginning to think through how can we become a more effective community as a group. And there'll also be a debate at the end of CBA 11 but all of those of us from IID would be very keen to hear your views at any point. And secondly, how can we begin to distill what really works? What are the characteristics of effective action? There was a meeting a few weeks ago with many of the same organisations, or some of the international organisations anyway, reflecting on the experience of the large resilience programming that's been going on over the last few years. And they came out with um, seven areas, seven characteristics if you like, and we'd like to test those and see whether we can develop them and improve them with this group. So they were tackling the root causes of vulnerability, which is around governance and power, which is around getting the finance behind the priorities of the poor. Secondly, to integrate and layer mechanisms. We're not seeking a magic bullet. We know that many things are needed in order to reduce the vulnerability of the poorest, but how can we be more methodical, methodical about bringing them together? We need to work deliberately across scale. We need to work at that local level, but we also need to be looking at catchment level, at regional level, at national level. And we need to be investing in, in, in mechanisms and institutions that enable flexible, adaptive, and responsive approaches. We need to invest long term. We need to stop trying to rush to try and get del delivery, sorry, deliver results tomorrow when actually what we need to be investing in is long term into the institutions and in the capabilities. We need to be working with governments and local governments because they can reach scale. And finally, we need to have foresight. We need to recognise that some of what, we, what might be right to do today for current clim climate variability might not be the right thing to be doing in the future. So, I hope these characteristics resonate, but let's try and develop them, let's try and come out at the end of this with a clear understanding of what is the most effective ways of investing in resilience at the local level. And at the end, um, be able to convince the donors, the governments, the funds to focus on these priorities and together deliver on the promise of Paris, 
the ambition that we need to see by 2020. Thank you all very much.